Welcome to this video lecture on Microsoft Excel tables. I'll start this lecture with trying to answer why use an Excel table. I find that the description and the reasoning behind using Excel tables provided by Parsons et al. in the New Perspectives on Microsoft Excel 2013 Comprehensive Textbook one of the easiest to understand. Excel tables makes it easier to identify, manage, and analyze groups of related data. When you're using an Excel table, your header row will automatically have filters turned on. The table range is formatted using an Excel table style. A table tools design ribbon tab becomes available with some easy to use functions. And the last cell in the lower right hand corner of the table will have a sizing handle to easily change the size of your table. All of those contribute to the benefit of using an Excel table, how it makes your life using the data in Excel easier. Next, this lecture will show how to create an Excel table, how to rename the table from the default name of Table 1, how to modify the table using options on the Table Tools design ribbon, including formatting using table styles, and maintain the data by adding, editing, and deleting records, including things like using the Find or Find and Replace function to help with editing. We'll next begin looking at a spreadsheet to demo these things. Here we have the Widgets R Us worksheet. I'm going to go back to the Home ribbon. Now, you can see this is the data for a sales organization selling widgets, three basic types, basic, complex, and programmable, and they're just total by sales for the each day. This is set up as structured data. To make it even easier to analyze our data and our, for our sales for this organization, we're going to first begin by creating an Excel table. So converting this structured range of data, which is quite large, since we have six months worth of data here, into an Excel table. So I have one row the top with good labels in it. So all I need to do now is select a single cell of my structured data, and this is data that is contiguous, meaning there are no blank rows or columns in my data. I'm going to go over to Insert, Ribbon, and here I simply select in the first group, the Tables group, the Tables option. I click on that. It will now propose the range to me on this pop-up dialog box. So the data I'm selecting is A1 through D385. It's checking. My table has headers, which is accurate. My table does have headers. And I'm simply going to click OK. Once I've done that, you can see I now have my Table Tools Design ribbon. This is now a table in Excel. On each of my labels in row 1, you'll see I have the drop-down filter button. So filtering is turned on. And I have some additional functionality available up here on the Table Tools Design ribbon. So the basics of creating an Excel table are fairly simple. You need a set of data that is a structured date set of data with a set of labels in row 1 no blank rows, no blank columns, then you simply go to the Insert ribbon and select Table. Once you're here, you can go over to that Table Tools Design ribbon and you can modify how things look. One of the first things I like to do is change my table name. So here, the default table name is always Table 1 or Table followed by the number, depending on how many tables you have already created in that particular workbook. I'm going to rename this, so I simply click up there on Table 1 to select that range, and I'm just going to name it Sales Data. I'm not putting any blanks in, but I'm using capitalization to set my name apart. Now, if I look on my name box, 
I will find I have a sales data and when I select that it selects that entire range. I can also change various things up here. I can change my table style. Maybe I don't particularly care for that color. I want to go to something like this. That makes it easier for me to read, perhaps. Or I just have that as a preference for my color. You choose. I can also change whether I have banded rows or not. Maybe I want the last column to be highlighted by making it bold or not. Maybe I want to band my columns or not. You have a variety of things to do here. Now, while I'm in here, I can maintain my data pretty easily. If I need to add data to the table, that's pretty easy. I just go to the bottom of my data after my last row. So right here, you can see that here in this cell I have the little right angle blue caret indicating if I click and drag I can make it bigger. It will automatically fill in some data for me depending on what I have in there. Or I can simply tab from the last cell and add new data. So if I wanted to add in more data then I could put that in here. Maybe I realize oh that's not the data I want. I simply select it and delete the data. I can also find particular sets of data. Maybe I want to find and replace everything called basic. Maybe I've renamed my basic category. So I want to find all my basics. And it will go through and find for me or I could say let's replace basic with option one. And I could go through and find and replace all of those. You'll see I've got 128 that I've replaced in this example. So there's all sorts of things you can do. You can of course when you come back to the table tools design ribbon you can remove duplicates if you have multiple people entering data. Maybe somebody accidentally enters data for one day twice and nobody notices. You can use this to help you find. Here you'll find that you can remove duplicates in a variety of ways based on dates, columns, days of the week. Maybe we want to do it on everything except um, sale type and I'll see that I have no duplicates there or sale amount, my total, pardon me. So lots of things you can do. Play around with it and watch for future lectures on how to manage and manipulate your data.